My name is Dr. Ayana Howard and I am a roboticist. So I was interested in robotics from a very young age and at the time there was this one show where there was a woman, she was horribly mangled in an accident and they put her together with bionic parts. The show was called The Bionic Woman and I was enthralled and fascinated. And so that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to build The Bionic Woman, which eventually became doing robotics. And actually at first, I thought I wanted to go to med school because if anyone actually saw the movie, the uh, very hot ones were the doctors. Uh, the engineers were the ones that were always in the background, pocket protectors. And at the time, I didn't see myself like that. But I then went to high school, I took biology and I didn't like it. And I loved math. And I had a teacher say, hey, why don't you think about engineering? And I was like, well, they were like, look, what you see on TV in terms of engineering is not what it's about. And so I finally figured out I wanted to be an engineer. When I went to college, my very first summer after my freshman year, I started working at NASA. And I started working primarily on robotic spacecrafts and programming with data. Now we have beautiful languages. Then it was a language called Fortran and Pascal, which are kind of old, ancient languages that no one really reads now. And I just grew up, was mentored at NASA, started working on future Mars rover missions when I was after grad school. And now I work on healthcare robotics. If I'm using and deploying a study with people, we tend to go out into the field. So if I'm thinking about my robot and we're trying to interact with kids with special needs in the clinic. So we'll take the robot out there, we'll do a whole setup with the robot and we have these camera systems so we can model and learn and take data from the child. We will run a game because all of our robots, at least in therapy, have games. We'll take the data, we'll collect the data. Usually I'll talk to the parent or clinician on the side while my grad students might be collecting the data and running the experiment. And then we come back and analyze what happened. One personal challenge that I've had is as a woman engineer, typically I might be the only one that looks like me in a room. And so one challenge that I had to overcome very early on is how do you go into an environment where you know your stuff, but everyone else may not think so. So how do you get the courage to basically speak up and say, hey, this is my domain, I know what I'm doing. In terms of a technical challenge, the biggest one I had was when I started at Georgia Tech, we were working with scientists looking at how do we collect science measurements from glaciers, so from cold environments. I grew up in California, snow is not part of the ecosystem on a regular basis. So how do you create a solution for an environment you don't know? And so that was a challenge. We actually had to go visit glaciers to figure out what does this actually feel like? And I know I don't want to live in cold places from that, but going through that and trying to figure that out was a challenge, which we then overcome. We sent robots to glaciers, we collect science data. And so we overcame that as a technical challenge.